All right, hello everybody. Welcome back, Carl again. Today I'm going to talk about a um, fuse that I'm going to install on my Line Owl Power Master. So this is the older Power Master that doesn't have the switch. This is actually 135 watts. So if you do 135 watts divided by 18 and a half volts, that gives you about seven and a half amps. So a fuse you want to put in there is seven amps. Now here's how I'm going to install mine pull the cover off here set that to the side what I'm gonna do for mine is uh, the, on these terminals the bottom one is ground this one is hot and this one is not used this top one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the thermal fuse in between this one and this one and then just use this top one as the output so that it's fused on the output so here's my thermal fuse this is um, seven amps you can go with whatever one you want if you want to use a seven and a half that's fine so it's kind of hard to see down in there, but there are the terminals that I'm going to solder to. Now this probably would have been easier to do uh, on my previous video when I did the repair of these uh, transistors down in here. It would probably have been easier to solder. So hopefully I can still get to these and actually solder that in. Okay, so here's what I did. I went ahead and put the fuse in, and I used this terminal right here. This terminal connects to this middle terminal, which is the AC hot end. And the hot end goes through here, through these capacitors. So it comes from here, through this capacitor, and then through these three capacitors over here, these four capacitors. So on the schematic, it looks like this. That's that pin number two in. Okay. Then what I did was I soldered the other end of this fuse to this top terminal, which is connected to nothing on this board. So now, when I bring my AC ground on the bottom, I bring my AC hot end, it has to run through this fuse and then into that pin. So that way I'm now fuse protected on the input. Hopefully that'll keep these transistors from blowing. So I didn't want to buy, Lionel sells a pin that, or a harness that fits in there. I didn't want to buy that, so I made my own. So this is an old from an old computer supply, and here's what I did. I actually hacked two of these apart. The first one I cut just through here on these terminals so that I could spread apart this plastic and pull these connectors out here without damaging them. Uh, then what I was able to do was cut one off and then kind of shape it so that it fits in this part. And now what I have. I think can then take the colored wires and put them in the order I want. So I re-plug them into the new one. That gives me black, yellow, and red. So now black is my AC ground or the bottom pin, and then red will be my AC hot or the top pin, which runs through the fuse into there. Now, if you don't want to solder to this board and mess with it, especially if you have one under warranty. You could always stick this fuse in line here. And I mean, that'd be a simple process of just, you know, soldering that fuse in this red wire so that you have a little bit of protection. That way, if something happens and you have to send this back for warranty, you don't have to worry about your warranty. Because I'm almost certain that if you solder to this board, you're going to avoid the warranty on this product. Now, in my situation, I got this used and I don't care. And I kind of have a little clue of what I'm doing. Maybe just a little bit. So, anyhow, I know this will work. And I mounted this way so I don't have to try to reach my solder iron down there and, and uh, tack to it. Now, if you're in the process of changing these transistors and you have this board off, this heat sink off, you might want to go ahead and just put it in there. Why not? So, nevertheless, anyhow, that's what I'm going to go with. So, I'm going to button this back together and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I have it back together. Here is my uh, made connector. The other thing I didn't talk about earlier was I just kind of sanded this down and also used a file to get that concave um, shape in. So now this connector will plug perfectly into that. And now I have my own Molex connector here. And this was completely free. I mean, it just took a little bit of my time. I have a ton of these laying around from old power supplies. I'm sure you will as well. Ask somebody at work, hey, you have an extra power supply, an old computer at home I could have. And then you'll end up with this nice little Molex connector that is color-coded wires. Uh, so now what I can do is actually use any transformer 
and now power this and I'll have circuit protection. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it up so you can see that it's working. Uh, the other nice thing about this is if you're trying to diagnose a problem, you'll know if your fuse is blown because you won't have any power. These fuses are actually thermal reset. So once the power, the short goes away and they cool down, they'll actually reconnect. So you don't have to worry about replacing glass blown fuses. All right, so here's just a regular AC transformer, nothing fancy. It takes 120 volts and steps it down to about 19 volts. All right, so I'm going to power this one. You see I have the red wire, which goes to the top through the fuse into this middle wire, also connected to the yellow, which is connected to nothing, and then black, of course, to the other side of the AC transformer. Flip the switch. You see I got a green light. Okay, so hopefully this is, was useful. It gives you some ideas about how to fuse protect your Lionel Powermaster. If you have any comments, go ahead and stick them down below. Thanks for watching.